All right, hey again, AP Chemistry. So I wanted to focus more on the reactions itself with titrations and focus on the acetic acid. Now, acetic acid, which is HC2H3O2, that is a weak acid. It's a weak acid, so it tends to be in equilibrium when it dissociates. And so when I say dissociation, if I have a weak acid, HA, aqueous, it can break apart into H plus aqueous and A minus aqueous, right? So for acetic acid, it would be HC2H3O2 aqueous, and it's a weak acid, and we did this last week with equilibrium. Some H plus will come off, and some A minus will come off. And we use this H plus to solve for pH. And the way that we normally solve for this pH is using an ice table. So it's kind of like if I had an initial concentration of something, or if I have an initial reactant, how much product can I have if I know it's at equilibrium? So I need to use the Ka and the Keq, and so on and so forth. Same idea. So if I have this titration curve now, I have a weak acid. One thing you do need to know, and I made a big note in a bubble here, if I have an acid, every acid or every H plus will react with every OH minus. If I have five H pluses, if I have five H pluses, that will react with five OH minuses. Boom. If I and so if let's say I have ten H pluses, but I have 20 OH minuses, then if I have 10 H pluses and 20 OH minuses, I have more OH minus. So only 10 of those H pluses can react with only 10 of the OH minuses. So I'll get 20, I'll get uh, 10 H2Os, and then I'll have 10 OH minuses left. And that's because if I add H plus to OH minus, H and OH, I don't know if you knew this, H and OH is water. That is why in an acid-base reaction, I get water as a product. So in our acid-base reaction, we have acetic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide in a one-to-one -one mole ratio, and I will get H2O, which is H and OH. The H comes from the acid, the OH comes from the base, and I'll get NaC2H3O2. This is sodium acetate, okay? And this is sodium hydroxide. So I would suggest going back over naming if you don't know where I'm getting this naming from. So for every one mole of acid, I will react with one mole of base. If I had 0.1 moles of acid, how many moles of base would I need? 0.1. If I had one million moles of acid, how many moles of base would I need to neutralize it? One million. If I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of acetic acid or molecules of acetic acid, I would need 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sodium hydroxide. So make sure you know how acids and base react. For every one H plus, I'll need one OH minus. Later on, we're gonna do some math where if I have an example, if I have more OH minus than H plus, they will cancel out, and whatever's left over in excess, I need to use for pH. So in my example here, I had uh, 20 OH minuses that I just quickly talked about, and I had 10 H pluses down here. Well, I only need 10 of the OHs to react with the 10 H pluses. So if I do that subtraction, 20, 10 of the 20, I have 10 OHs left over, and I had 10 H pluses and 10 OHs, that made 10 water and the 10 water makes pH neutral. But if I had 10 OH minus left over, I'm gonna make my pH a bit basic. That we'll talk about next week. But I wanna make sure that you know where this curvature is coming in the titration curve. I start out with more acid than base here, and then at some point I have equal amounts, and then I have more. So make sure you label these parts of your titration curve. I should have more acid, then base. At some point it equals off here, because I told you this is your buffer region. So I have 
H A is equal to A minus. But this is my more acid than base region. And when I say base, I mean sodium hydroxide. Then I have my moles of my acid is equal to my moles of my base region. And that's at the equivalence point. And then I have another region where if my pH spiked up here, am I going to have more base or more acid? Well, I have more base than acid. And that is why the pH is so high. So I have more acid than base down here. So my pH is going to be dependent on my H plus and my HA. And I could use ice and whatnot for that. My moles of my acid or my amount of acid is equal to my amount of base. So my pH is going to probably be equal to my equivalence point pH. Equivalence point pH. Okay. And then up here, I have more base than acid. So I have more OH minus. Down here, I have more H plus. And so up here, my pH is going to be dependent on my amount of OH minus that's left over or in excess. Down here, it's going to be how much H plus I have left over. Okay. And then again, something very important. I said this like so many times. This region where my acid, so my HC2H3O2, that's equal in concentration to my conjugate base of C2H3O2 minus. And I don't know if you could see that, but my conjugate base is I remove an H. So my acetate ion is an equal concentration. This is known as the buffer region. And again, it's called the buffer region because a buffer, if you remember maybe from biology or if you're taking organic chemistry, buffer resists pH change. And so graphically, and all of you should be pretty good at interpreting and reading graphs, graphically, how can I show a resistance to change? Well, a resistance to change means constant. And our body does this. Our body has to say it's some sort of constant pH or we die or we get sick. So I have a constant pH here, or it's kind of not changing as much. And this is known as my buffer region. And that's when my HA is equal to my A minus in concentration. And this range right here, whatever the pH is at this range, this pH is equal to pKa. And so you're going to need to know this when you're solving for the Ka of the acetic acid. The pH here, let's say it looks like it's about 3 point, I'm making this up. But if my pH at this range, like I take like a line and I draw through it, you're going to do that when you print out or make your graphs. I'm going to draw a line back to the, the y-axis, which is pH. Whatever pH this is, that's my pKa. And then just so you know, pKa is equal to the negative log of Ka. So pKa is equal to the negative log of Ka. So if I wanted to solve for my Ka, 10 raised to the negative pKa is equal to Ka. So 10 raised to the negative pH equal to pKa business. So that was the, I, I made up a number and said it was 3.45. 10 raised to the negative 3.45 is going to be equal to my Ka. And then you could solve that graphically or on a calculator. One of the tasks that you have to do is solving for Ka, and that's how you do it. Another task is solving for the unknown concentration or the amount of acetic acid and vinegar. Well, just so you know, and you should read this in the abstract and background, the only thing sodium hydroxide is going to react with in vinegar is acetic acid. So the moment I have my equivalence point, that that equivalence point number, math that I'm doing here, that moles of base is equal to my moles of my acetic acid in vinegar. So let's say, for example, I titrated this and it looks like it's at about 17.5. So I used 17.5 milliliters of a 0.1 molar NEOH. Okay? So I used 17.5 17 milliliters of 0.1 molar NEOH. This is how much I use to get to my equivalence point. Please remember my favorite equation. If I have a volume and I have a molarity, what can I solve for? Molarity times volume in liters 
equals the moles. So if I take this volume and I multiply by the molarity, I will get the moles of my NaOH. And I'm telling you, and I told you, that this is a one-to-one -one mole ratio. It's a monoprotic acid. When I say monoprotic, I mean one proton, HA, as opposed to diprotic, H2A, or triprotic, H3A. So if I figure out volume times molarity, and that's my moles of my base, that's equal to my moles of my acid. So this is gonna be equal to my moles of acetic acid. Later on in part B, when you do the study of acetic acid, it wants the grams of acetic acid. How do I go from moles of acetic acid to grams of acetic acid? Anybody remember? If you're watching this video, you're probably mouthing to yourself, multiplying by the molar mass. And I gave you the formula for acetic acid, so you just have to add up all the elements, molar masses, to get the grams of acetic acid. And you're going to need that number later when you do calculations for percent acetic acid and how much acetic acid was in the vinegar. So we'll talk about that calculation during class or later. So now, if I have my moles of acetic acid, how do I figure out my concentration? Well, let's say in this example, I had you take 10 milliliters of the unknown acetic acid. If I had you take 10 milliliters of the unknown acetic acid, and I know my moles, so if I do my 17.5, and if I divide that by 1,000, right, that's going to be equal to 1, 2, 3, 0.0175 liters times 0.1, all right, so times 1 tenth. So I should get 0 0.00175 moles of my base, which is equal to my moles of my acid. So if I have my moles of my base here, or which is equal to my moles of my acid, if I want to figure out concentration, remember, concentration, which is molarity, is what we talk about, is moles divided by liters. So if I have my moles, which is the 0 0.00175 that I got, divided by liters of my acid. Well, I told you that we took 10 milliliters of the unknown acid, so I must need to divide by that volume. That volume is what I took from my vat, or my stock solution of my acetic acid. So those moles are gonna say constant in that volume. So if I want the concentration of the original acetic acid, I would take the moles and I would divide by the volume that you took. So that would be the 10 milliliters, and I probably want to divide that by 1,000 to get my liters. And that is how I would find my concentration of my un unknown acetic acid. Okay? So in part A, part A, I'm asking you to do this. Part B, you could do the same thing, or part B, I'm asking you to, you don't even need a titration curve for part B. Part B, I want you to just get the volume, how much you use, that volume to the end point is going to help me get the moles of my base, which is equal to my moles of my acid. And then I want you to do these steps here, where you go moles of acid is equal to moles of base. And then if I know my moles of my acid, I multiply by the molar mass, and I will get my grams of my acetic acid, which you need for the calculations. Okay? So I'm hoping that this video was also helpful. This board is full of information that I will probably keep for class tomorrow. I'm going to direct you to this video because this video is super helpful to understand all you need to know about reacting acids and bases and titration curves. All right, so if you have any questions or comments or concerns or any issues, please let me know either in the video on the Google Classroom or in the Remind.